what's going on YouTube well it's been a minute and definitely been sort of busy I know a lot of people have probably been re trying to uh, stay sane and try to break out of the routine I'm sure a lot of people might be at home right now but uh, I've been staying busy a lot of projects around the house for springtime and I was um, you know not able to collect as many cars recently trying to do my part and uh, stay out of the stores and try to slow down on my online <laughs> purchases we did get some stuff in and I have more planned but I figured I'd take some time that I was able to uh, basically go into my room my hobby area uh, for myself <laughs> there's a lot of things going on and uh, I had some extra materials sitting around, and I wanted to build something. I used to build houses a long time ago, model houses like this. Not too many, but um, I always liked having some backgrounds for my vehicles. Well, that was a while ago, so they got lost at the time. And I had some of this foam core, and I also uh, had the opportunity to peruse an uh, independent art supply store that was going out of business oh many months ago so I bought some stock uh, I got some really nice paper mat material basically that heavy paper that you would put in an, uh, a picture a painting a watercolor something like that that you'd hang on your wall and you want to mat it so that's basically the paper it's a very heavy gauge it cuts nicely, but you have to have a very sharp blade uh, and a good straight edge, but it's good for building scale material, and I wouldn't have to wipe out using my foam. So I made some of the roof out of that material, and it worked out quite well. So we'll go over the construction process. I have my contractors on site right now, <clears throat> but... Basically, I made this with probably three, four, five basic household materials, a little bit of art supplies. Um, didn't have to buy a bunch of wood. I used to make houses out of scale wood, but that can be expensive. This is kind of more like something I was doing for, as an, a design experiment to kind of see how large I want to make something and kind of what shapes and, and architectural cues I want to use. I do like the mid-century modern type stuff, although I added a lot more windows than what is usual. I was just kind of playing with the, what I was, you know, kind of aesthetically looking for. So, I think it goes pretty good. I mean, it's a large house for 164 scale. Um, let me take a look here real quick. Uh-oh. Camera's giving me difficulties. There we go. So I thought it turned out nicely. Um, it's got a lot of work to do. I got to frame the windows and uh, do more trim. Uh, I did some skylight um, stuff on top. The roof comes off right now. The chimney part here, that's made out of foam, kind of, if you can't tell. Uh, stuff that comes in our mail calls for all my cars. There's plenty of that. Uh, so this is probably going to get covered with some sort of um, stone. And I'm either going to sculpt it out of clay and do a wash over that. Or I'll probably see if I can find pebbles or pea gravel, something like that, that I could do. And that might look good too. There's certain small stone, decorative stone, that you can get. And it could look like a rock chimney. It's one of my favorite trucks. All right, so let's back the vehicles out. I'll let these guys go on lunch break real quick. And let's take a look at the house. I think it turned out okay. But uh, we'll see. We'll see what our comments say down, down below. <laughs> um, we'll do a little bit of a walk around. So this is this foam core. And I'll, let me take out some of the material I used. I saved some scraps so everybody can get an idea of what I used. So, of course, we have our um, packing foam, and it comes in different sizes. We had bought some furniture recently, and it was a real cash 
of different foams and thicknesses. So here's one of the building materials. And then I had a, um, a family member ship something to me and they packed it with a lot of this. So I actually have a couple of sheets of this and it doesn't take much. So this is basically what my walls are. And this is nice material because you can size it any way you want. And if you, you're good with a straight edge, you can make pretty sharp detail with it. Um, so there's one of the major building materials. You can get this in different colors, but white's easy to work with because you're always going to paint it. And then next thing I used was that photo mat material or painting mat, you know, picture matting, basically. Uh, let me find a decent square of it. Okay, so this type of stuff. You can kind of draw on this, too, if you wanted to. Let me see if I can get the wash out. There you go. So it's got a little bit of a grain to it, but it's thick. So oh, this is probably about an eighth or something like that. I'd say it's more than a sixteenth, but when you're looking at it on 164 scale vehicles, I mean, it's almost like a size of uh, more than drywall, really. But this adds up well, so I'll show you how I built up a roof section real quick. Um, so there's really just that that material, and then I would glue it with uh, wood glue, which uh, I, it really bonds paper products very well, and this is mostly paper type products. So it's, it doesn't set immediately like a super glue would, and it gives me time to position this stuff and get it taped. Sometimes I'll use um, tape to hold things together so they dry in the, in the right orientation. I put an edge on this, and I might actually do an underhang as well. Um, this is probably going to be like a, a gravelish surface when I'm done with it. I can use um, coarse sand, things like that, and then paint over it, and it'll look like those older style gravel roofs. So that'll turn out pretty well. I haven't framed out the skylights or anything like that. But it just comes out. Um, it was quite easy. I just traced the floor plan, basically. So I put, when the house was done, I just kind of put it on top of the paper and cut it out and then trimmed as necessary. What I did was I started with a large rectangle, and then I figured out where I wanted my overhangs to go. So if I push this on here real quick... Um, this had to be cut back because it was originally over here because the the doorway is set in so things like that and then along the back side which we'll get to the house i also trimmed it there because i did a step and you can cut this out uh basically all in just one piece and cut out your windows it's not that hard um you can kind of just go as you please really so I haven't done any framing yet. I haven't done any interior walls. I was just kind of playing with like how large I wanted this and what kind of slope I wanted on the roof. So you can see on the back where I haven't put any joint compound is I'd kind of make a section and then add to it, take it away, add a section there, and just kind of feel out where I wanted everything. So this house is probably going to get painted um, I'm not really interested in having a plain white. I think a color would look good. I just don't know which. I kind of did a stucco treatment, but again, I could just as easily sand this down and make it all smooth. I can use um, scale timber and basically do siding. I can do something like a stain. I can do a lot of different treatments to it. But I think I'm going to finalize the windows make sure I don't want to add or subtract any more windows and then I'll probably figure out the next finish. Now if I painted the house the stucco will look okay. I'm probably also going to frame windows out by using some more of my paper by cutting it in there and everything. So that'll look more finished. Adding small details at a time helps you not overbuild it and keep it simplified. And this would probably be more like an updated mid-century house um, something that has been repaired so I did some cross beams I don't know if that's the final placement I want that so 
I'm just figuring it out right now. I did kind of a cutout for a fireplace. But uh, basically, really, I mean, we're not going to be really doing too much of the interior. It's really for a backdrop. And probably um, I'll be putting this on a base so it can be moved onto a shelf. I don't know if I need to use this as a background for the YouTube channel or not yet. It does take up a lot of space. But uh, we'll go over it step by step. I just kind of wanted to get, get it to a, 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 a stopping point where I could share it and uh, go from there, basically. But it'll be our backdrop because we do actually have a little bit of cars to look at. I did find some things. I mean, I can't stop looking for cars i mean that's not going to happen but i i try to do it as safely as possible <laughs> um so yeah just simple materials this house didn't cost anything to build really um and if you're wondering how i did the stucco a lot of people kind of are curious about that uh really simple this is the uh joint compound in my old stash everybody's seen this before so this is an amazing material. It's just basically like a scaled down version of what they put on the house for real when they're doing stucco. I mean, it dries the same and I can spatula it on with a small um, tool. You know, I can make different spatulas for it, different knives or whatever. Um, using the building materials that I've, you know, just scraps of this stuff basically. And I throw it away when I'm done. So I really don't have to get anything too special. And it dries completely white, so it'll take paint pretty good. Again, I'm it's still a long way to go, but when we get it finished up, we'll take another look at it. Definitely. All right, so contractors are back. Let's get these guys back to work. They're going to come in and continue the job that I need them to do. Definitely need this guy. Got to have him. It's a very tall house. And we got our Mr. Flatbed, definitely, and old Jim Bob here in a square body. All right, nice cars to look at. So I got a green light, I got a matchbox, and then I got a bunch of Hot Wheels. There was quite the amount of premium still coming down the pike. Uh, and also a casting uh, that has been out for many times, but I have not ever had one. I didn't even get the main line, and I'm talking about Hollywood. So we're going to look at really cool Hollywood car. Let me get the card for it real quick. Here it is. So I'm talking about the original DeLorean Back to the Future. This car is basically from the first movie. Because it doesn't have any the funny wheels on it or anything like that. So I wanted the OG, and this is great. It's basically in clear coated Zamac, so I mean it looks amazing. It's got the right wheels on it. Um, it's got the DMC uh, DeLorean Tampo, so it's got all that stuff. I love the. Um, let's take a look here real quick. Definitely love the Tampa work on this. Let's take a zoom. So you can see on the, the bumper at DeLorean. Let's get this to back up a little bit. There we go. So really cool detail. I mean, look at the interior. It's got all the wires draped over the seats and everything. DMC, very interesting company. I think it was one or two year car. Obviously, John DeLorean, the namesake, was the gentleman that put it together. And they used um, French engines. I don't know if it was Renault or uh, Peugeot engines, but it was like a six cylinder with a five speed stick and it had all sorts of issues with it. Um, the cool thing was it was actual stainless steel. <laughs> so, steel wool, and that was it. You can clean your car that way and just kind of leave it. So they're neat. They're neat cars. They got a lot of uh, retrofits for them now and things like that. So they run better now than they ever did when they were brand new. All right. So this is a cool car. I believe it's really close to 164 scale. I mean, it wasn't a tiny car when it came out. It's almost like a size of the first gen, second gen Supra 
car basically it's kind of like that size of course it has gold wing doors and all that all right so delorean very very excited to have that in the collection next we're going to look at another hollywood series car this is another casting but i only have it in the two pack a premium that they did a few years ago hot wheels i'm talking about ecto one and this is ecto one i don't think it's ecto two yeah so it's got the white walls very narrow track on these cadillacs this is basically a 59 caddy um very very famous front end huge car it was it was like a 470 something cubic cubic inch v8s on these like huge motors something like that so 59 oh it was a large end or maybe it was a 350 something 352 i think maybe it was under 400 someone can correct me down below please but uh yes ghostbusters they found this car and then they rehabbed it and then they uh took down the bad guys so it's a neat car let's take a little quick zoom so this is the probably hundredth ecto car they've made but uh their premium stuff is great so Look, they have to put the trademark so brightly now on the on the car. Such a trademark vehicle. It's our base. Nice shiny metal. I mean, the tires are cool. This is good for wheel swaps if you need narrow track axles. If you're not the one that cut the tires off. And they do the front, and they got the, the plate. So that's good. Pretty cool. Let's go all your nonsense up there. Okay. So it's nice to have one loose. Basically, I wanted a loose one. Do we look at the card art? Let's look at it. It's, I mean, it's neat. Let's look at this to uh, focus real quick. There we go. Of course, you don't see anything on the back. Just more licenses. Okay. So we went through those two. Kind of an interesting uh, background this time. <laughs> With the house instead of the garage. Um, another TV car. So this is my favorite Batmobile. And this is my first, I think this is, yeah, this is pretty much my first premium. I have the Batmobile, TV series Batmobile, uh, pretty much a lot of the old main lines. I don't have, I have the, uh, what is it? The ID, Hot Wheels ID one. So that's a kind of like a Zamac, uh, computer chip one. I got that one too. It's in the box. So, but this premium is sweet, and um, I love the rims. They use those the dished wheels. Looks very, very nice. The chrome lip, and the tampo work on the car is amazing. They got the really good paint. So a lot of these Hot Wheel premiums are almost like little pieces of jewelry because they make them, the paint jobs are so nice on them, and they roll so good. So they're just fun cars to look at. So you could see... It's having a hard time with the whitewash too on the background. It's kind of throwing everything off. It's just a great looking car. There's not a single chip on it. Um, of course, this car is made, and if anybody doesn't know, I mean, it was a completely made up vehicle. Actually, Lincoln, Ford Motor Company under Lincoln. So they had a concept car in the 50s called the Futura. So it's a Lincoln Futura, and it had this top made. And basically this whole body, I mean, he, Barris or, was it Barris? I think it was Barris or, or the other customizer. It doesn't come to my head. But anyway, he was making these cars, and he kind of detailed it, painted it, did the rims, did all the treatments to it. But a lot of this was all from the concept. I mean, there were some things added. The grill was kind of changed a little bit. But this hooded um, headlight area... And most of this wing area and the, and the profile of the car, that was all done from Lincoln, especially the the double windshield here. That was all from the Lincoln. So they added, you know, pipes and <laughs> the uh, jet exhaust. But a lot of this was from Lincoln. So it was already a pretty far out car before it was even turned into the Batmobile. There was genius, though, behind the decision to use that car for a Batmobile because it was it was quite the statement. Um the Batmobile from the comic books and stuff was kind of a cartoonish looking car. And this was very serious. So definitely like it. 
um it's got that look at the paint quality it's, it's almost like it, it was dipped in uh chocolate and put in the oven or something like that because it's so thick <laughs> but it's cool i love the red the accent red i mean it's just an awesome car so love that show um when it was on television it's still probably on television but it's it's hilarious because it's so it's so fake but uh, it's awesome. So who doesn't love Adam West? Okay, next we're going to look at uh, some more Hot Wheels Premium while we're doing it. So Fast and Furious. This is the other car I wanted from this set. So we looked at the white Subaru last time. Now we got the EG Hatch, which is a tremendous Honda. And it's really because the car is so tiny. Now, this is the golden age of honda uh, strong engine very very simple vehicle no electronics amazing stuff but the eg hatch which is this generation civic very extremely light it was almost like a del sol i mean it was a very good car you put any sort of built honda or acura engine in this car it it really moves uh I've had a friend that had one of these. He did have a built Acura motor <laughs> block in it, and it was like it. Was, I thought we were in a V8. I mean, it accelerated hard, very, very hard, and I was very impressed. So, I've always liked these cars anyway because they are. I like hatchbacks, but uh, when I saw that, when you have the mating of that big motor, big four cylinder, and a little tiny front wheel drive car, it was awesome. So, it was like a bat out of hell. So this is kind of like their. This looks like a JDM car. It's got a uh, right-hand drive. It's got the um, VTEC badging. So I think the ones, the EGs that were here, I, I don't know if they made an SI. I don't think they did. And here, anyway, North America. And I don't think they had anything other than like their smaller 1.8 or something like that. So... This is definitely a hotter car. It's got, it looks like it's got um, fiberglass or carbon fiber hood. Can never get more light. Uh, very, very... Uh, so you can see the headlights. I mean, a lot of dot printing on that. So you can see. I mean, there's a lot of detail there, but it gets washed out close up. Let's see if we can get the white balance to change a little bit. So... Yeah, it's still very detailed. That's a cool car. This is the, I mean, this is the debut casting. It's nice to get the first run. So, very excited. Let's look at the base. I like the flat black looks good. I think that was a good choice. Not gloss. And the grill is done very good, too. There's no license plate on this car. So, very fun. All right, so got the Civic, and during the Honda theme, I am trying to complete my Honda City collection. I really haven't shown, I don't think, any Honda Cities, because most of them have been main lines. But a uh, little side thing I've been doing um, for some of my nether regions of my collection. Um, this is one of the castings I like. So I knew this would be a peg warmer, and... It has not disappointed me. It has been one of the peg warmers. And I was, <laughs> you know, these cars are more money than green lights sometimes, which is kind of funny. But, or Auto Worlds, really, for sure. They're more money than that. Um, so I'll kind of spread out my Hot Wheels Premium because they're definitely much more voluminous. There's a lot more of these to find. So, but yeah, that's not just, I mean, there's three or four of these hanging at a time every time I go somewhere. Um, so I waited and then I finally got it and, uh, it, it looks good as I'm probably up to almost 10 of these things now with all the color variations. Uh, this is an enormous scale and this is a very small car. This is smaller than that Civic and this thing looks like a, um, Wrangler. I mean the size of it, <laughs> but, uh, it's a great casting because of the detail. There's a lot of detail to this. This is the one that's kind of the race car version. It's not the stock version but i think they had i was looking this car up earlier a while ago but i think there was like a, a spec race series for this car so there's like a whole bunch of honda city turbos that would race and i think this is the representation of that vehicle so it's cool 
the paint scheme has not changed. I mean, they'll do different colors, but they kind of do the same thing over and over again and just in different livery. So it's kind of neat. But it's nice to see one full deco because when you see these cars, they tamper the, the sides, but they never do the headlights or anything. So it's nice to see the car fully done. It's got a great tamper on the windshield. There's an eyebrow type thing, type thing there. So a crisp detail. It's got kind of a faux uh, roll cage. And then they run the post right through the whole body, so... It's quite the beefy car. I guess you could throw it this thing against the wall and it wouldn't come apart. Turbine wheels. All right, Honda City. This is part of the Target exclusive. So these are kind of great. So Flying Customs. Another casting I try to find and collect is the Chevy Love. Great, really cool casting. Basically a mini tubbed Love. You know, hot rod or uh, drag vehicle. That's really cool. And there's the rest. That T-Bird, I don't know if it's been revised, but that goes way back, that casting. And some other stuff there, too. I'm trying to find the R30. That's kind of a difficult one to find. But it's a wild, wild truck. And I love the throwback graphics. They look great. It's got the gold wheels. Um, other channels have noticed, you know, when you look at these originally, they had a much thinner axle than it did have a quote-unquote suspension. But it was really you just bending the axle. There really wasn't any active suspension. Um, but it ran super smooth, and they were like basically half the diameter of the axle. They bend very easily. This is not that. This is just the wheels in reproduction, and they have a thick, you know, the stock axle on this. So this basically feels like a regular mainline, but it has the, you know, the same sidewall that they used to have in the gold rims. It's got the big tubbed bed, and it's got Chevy in the casting. So another reason I like this casting a lot. There's a lot of detail to this. If you take this thing apart and do your own chassis, um, it turns into a stock truck pretty nicely. I've seen some great Instagrammers make this truck into a stock truck, and it looks really cool. So if I find some more of these, because um, I'd have a bunch of them, but they go back a few years, try to find some I can kind of tear out. So this is cool too. All right, so we're going to go to our only matchbox we have today, and this is a cast that's been around. But I got this one because it was the most realistic looking to me. And it's the first time I actually looked at the base in the package. It was a 164th scale denoted matchbox, which is good. I try to get most of the 164 scale matchboxes, even the older school ones. So you can see right there. I would say it's close. Uh, this is a small car, but it's not tiny. Um, so when I put it next to some full-size trucks it does look a little big to me but uh they weren't tiny tiny cars but it wasn't enormous either so i'd probably have to do a basically the math on this and measure it and really get down to it but one of the reasons was uh the flat paint looked really great the red interior really reminded me of an old british vehicle and also the disc wheels i thought that was great this was a good car, a rare British sports car of the time period. This is 1963, so this was an Austin. It was a little bit cheaper than the Jaguar and the Astons and stuff like that, but this still gave you an inline six. So a little bit more affordable, but a bigger motor. And the other cars going down from this all had four cylinders, and they were very, very tiny. So this actually kind of gave you that inline six that you were looking for. And also the handling, but not having to go crazy price like a Jaguar, Aston, those type of vehicles. It's got great tampo work on it too. Really having a trouble with the white balance on this today. So you can see it has 3000 there in Austin Healy. They did the side gills and then the front. So it's almost a full tampoed vehicle. I guess they just didn't do the taillights. Yeah, they did. So it was a it was a kind of a good uh, deal. Left-hand drive car, very thick windshield. 
and they used the base as the floor from the interior. Let's see if we can get that to look a little bit up. Let's get this in there. There we go. So kind of neat that that was cool. So there's that. And in our last one today, we do have an, a premium vehicle. We have a Studebaker. Very, very cool car. This is the Lowy design car. Very, very forward for its time. This is a 1953 Studebaker Starliner Commander uh, Coupe. They also had a hardtop, a pillarless one. This one has a pillar on it. The Commander denotes that it had a V8. They also had a Champion Starlight. So Starlight and Starliner. A lot of words for this car. The Champion had the inline flathead six cylinder so this was a v8 car overhead valve which was rare for 1953 um v8 engine so automatic transmission amazing it was about what was it 259 cubes is about that average what they were doing and it had this amazing front end on it it also has this and i was looking at a video on this so i wanted to um, brush up on this car because it was really quite a car you can see the three star there of the Studebaker, and we'll look at that in detail in a minute. It has a funny story to that. They did a gold um, center on that wheel cover. The wheels are beautiful. The white walls kind of look faded, which I thought was weird. But the casting is superb. It's a great casting, another great one by Greenlight. They have done the club wagon recently with and they've done this one very well. It seems they're more going towards a trend of fully closed bodies. I think they're getting away from opening features. I think they're trying to get rid of that. I haven't seen it on, on most of their castings recently. So they call us a 53 Studebaker Commander. But they don't say Starliner. Um, which is interesting. It says Starliner, the Commander, is just the trim level. So I thought that was interesting. And I had to verify that because it was confusing me. Um, but so many of these cars made back then, it's hard to... Because they would change the name or they change the platform that the name applied to. <laughs> so you'd think, oh, that's that. No, it's not. Uh, so I did have to brush up, but it all came back to me because it was a car um, that I loved. They got a great back end on it. Um, it says Studebaker in that black bar and then they have the trim and that denotes the v8 now this three-pointed star when i was watching a review on it it's great mercedes-benz uh got very angry at studebaker and they sued him and they basically in 54 and 55 they had to take the star off the car so i guess 53 maybe early 54 cars were the only ones to have that star because they uh got sued <laughs> by mercedes they weren't allowed to use it even though mercedes had a circle around theirs the three-pointed star was definitely on their radar. Metal base, it has a serial number on it. And, of course, there's your V8 there as well. Very, very cool. Great blue. And the packaging. It's really great. So this car goes good with the mid-century house I'm building. And I took the card out because it's really neat. I'm going to basically um, cut this out. I'm going to take in the vintage ad cars. And this is kind of a friendly note to all you. The back side of these cards, you see the front, how it gets cut off. The back side, they, they include the ad unobstructed. So if you cut this out nicely, it looks like the ad, but it's just enlarged. And you can kind of put your car in front of the ad and uh, display it. So I got a few of those working right now on the shelf. I thought that was kind of a cool way to do it. But uh, what a great car and a great history. Very really cool history. So hopefully when this house is finished, we'll have a kind of a mid-century modern roundup. And we'll do some cars kind of like that. And we can probably do one of these and so forth. And I have some Cadillacs we can put there. It'll look good. It'll look very, very nice. Got another Fury. I was looking at these Furies earlier. So there is the update for today i hope all of you have been very safe i appreciate uh, every subscription and warm comment very very much appreciated 
And again, I hope everybody's staying safe and take care of each other out there. More to come. Well, I at least have more updates on the house as they are available. And uh, until next time.